This is a demonstration of problem 931A, determining asset costs, preparing depreciation schedules, three methods, and identifying depreciation results that meet management's objectives. On January 3, 2024, Rapid Delivery Service purchased a truck at a cost of $100,000. Before placing the truck in service, Rapid spent $3,000 painting it, $600 replacing tires, and $10,400 overhauling the engine. The truck should remain in service for five years and have a residual value of $12,000. The truck's annual mileage is expected to be 32,000 miles in each of the first four years and 8,000 miles in the fifth year, 136,000 miles in total. In deciding which depreciation method to use, Andy Sargent, the general manager, requests a depreciation schedule for each of the depreciation methods, straight line, units of production, and double declining balance. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate that the total cost of placing this truck in service. So they paid originally $100,000 for the truck. However, they had to paint it which was $3,000, put new tires on it, which was $600, and overhaul the engine for $10,400. So the total cost to place this truck in service was $114,000. Next, we need to calculate the depreciable cost. So to do that, we take the total cost of 114000 and we subtract from that the residual value which the problem stated was $12,000. So the depreciable cost for this truck is $102,000. Next, it asks us in the requirements in Part 1 to prepare a depreciation schedule for each depreciation method showing asset cost, depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation, and asset book value. So the first depreciation schedule that we're going to, uh, to calculate is for straight line depreciation. First, you need to determine what your straight line depreciation rate will be. So you take one and you divide it by the number of years of the useful life. So for this asset, they said that it would last for five years. So the depreciation rate will be 20% per year. So when we're calculating the depreciation for the year, we're going to use 20%, and that will be the, the same percentage for every year. Next, you need to determine your depreciable cost, which we did previously. The depreciable cost for this truck is $102,000, which was equal again to the asset cost minus the residual value. So my spreadsheet is calculating now the depreciation expense, which is the depreciable cost times the 20% depreciation rate, which equals $20,400. The accumulated depreciation at the end of the first year will be $20,400. And now the book value, which is equal to the original cost, minus the accumulated depreciation is $93,600. Now when you use straight line depreciation, you do not change your depreciable cost. So every year that $102,000 will be the, the depreciable cost. Also the depreciation rate will not change. So for all five years, the same amount of depreciation would be calculated, $20,000. $400, and each year the accumulated depreciation will go up by $20,400, and the book value would decline each year by $20,400 until the end of the last year, five years after the truck was placed in service, the book value would be $12,000, and that is when the company believes that they will no longer use the truck. The next depreciation schedule that we're going to calculate is units of production depreciation schedule. So first we have to calculate the depreciation per unit, which in this case is going to be the depreciable cost divided by the total number of units or the number of miles that the truck would be driven. So we calculated our depreciable cost before, which is the 
uh, total cost to place the truck in service of 114000 minus the residual cost. The problem gives us the total number of miles that the truck is expected to be driven, which is 136,000 miles. So we divide 102,000, the depreciable cost, by the total number of miles to be driven, and we get the depreciation per mile of 75 cents. So that will be the amount that we will be calculating times the number of miles for each of the years. So we'll put 75 cents, and that will be the same for each of the five years. Now the problem gave us the number of miles that they expect that the truck will be driven. In the problem it stated that the truck would be driven 32,000 miles in each of the first four years and 8,000 miles in the fifth year. So to calculate the depreciation or to do the depreciation schedule, we'll use 32,000 for the first four years and we'll use 8,000 for the last year, the fifth year. And now we can see that the uh, spreadsheet is calculating for us the depreciation expense. So it's 75 cents times the number of miles that were driven, or 24,000 for the first four years, and then in the last year, 75 cents times 8,000 miles is $6,000. It's also calculating the accumulated depreciation by taking the, in the first year, just the 24000 and then adding to that the depreciation that's calculated in each of the uh, succeeding years. The book value is declining, so the book value is calculated by taking the original cost minus the accumulated depreciation, so for the first year it would be 90000 and then the accumulated depreciation increases by 24000 and the book value drops by 24000 So this continues on until the last year in year 5, at the end of year 5, we would be left with the residual value of $12,000. Then the last depreciation schedule that we're going to prepare is for double declining balance. So we first have to determine the double declining balance rate. It will always be two times the straight line rate. So two times our straight line rate was 20% is equal to 40%. So our double declining rate that we will be using in the first four years will be 40%. So we're going to copy that for the first four years. Now, double declining balance is a little bit different from straight line or units of production in that we use the total asset cost to calculate the depreciation rather than the depreciable cost. So we'll see how this works. So in the first year, we take the uh, asset cost of 114000 and we multiply that by the double declining balance rate of 40%, and we get depreciation expense of $45,600. That will also be the amount in accumulated depreciation. To get the book value, we take the original cost minus the accumulated depreciation, and now we get a book value of $68,400. That will be the amount that we will use to calculate the depreciation for the second year. So we take $68,400 and we multiply that by the 40% double declining balance rate and we get $27,360, which when we add to the $45,600 gives us accumulated depreciation of $72,960 and now our book value is $41,040. We'll use that amount to calculate the depreciation for the third year. So $41,040 times 40% is $16,416 in depreciation, which when we add it to our previous balance in accumulated depreciation, gives us accumulated depreciation after the third year of $89,000. 
$376 and a book value of $24,624. And we will use that balance to calculate the depreciation in the fourth year. So $24,624 times 40% is $9,850, which when we add to the previous balance, 89376 gives us a cumulated depreciation of $99,226 and a book value of $14,774. So our book value in the fifth year is $14,774. Now the way that double declining balance works is you use the double declining balance rate until you get to the point where you would go below the residual value. So in the last year, when you use double declining balance, you do not depreciate below the residual value. So we know the problem said the residual value would be $12,000. So when we subtract that from $14,774, we get depreciation expense for the last year in the fifth year of $2,774, which when we add to the accumulated depreciation from the prior year of $99,226 gives us accumulated depreciation of $102,000 and a book value of $12,000. So we did not, we do not depreciate in the last year below the residual value. In part two, it asks us, it says, Rapid prepares financial statements using the depreciation method that reports the highest net income in the early years of asset use and asks us to consider the first year that Rapid uses the truck. So identify the depreciation method that meets the company's objectives. So if we look at all three of the depreciation schedules, we can see that Straight Line had 20000 $400 of depreciation expense in the first year. Uh, units of production had depreciation expense of $24,000 in the first year, and double declining balance had the highest amount of $45,600. So if the company wants to have the highest net income, then it would choose the method that has the lowest depreciation expense, and that would have been the straight line method. So that would be the choice that they would make for their depreciation method. And that is a con the conclusion of the demonstration for problem 931A.